Stand up in the fear of God and listen to the Holy Gospel, a chapter from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. The evangelist, apostle, and pure disciple, may his blessing. Teacher David, the prophet and king, may his blessings be with us all. Amen. But I am poor and sorrowful. Let your salvation, O God, set me up on high. I will praise the name of God. With the song, and will magnify him with thanksgiving. Bless Savior and the King of us all, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, glory be to you. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who spitefully use you. To him who strikes you on the one cheek, offer the other also. And from him who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who asks of you, and from him who takes away your goods, do not ask them back. And just as you want men to do to you, you also do to them likewise. But if you love those who love you, one credit is that to you. For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you hope to receive back, what credit is that to you? For even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much back. But love your enemies, do good and lend, hoping for nothing in return. And your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the highest. For he is kind to the unthankful and evil. Therefore be merciful, just as your Father also is merciful. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. 
condemn not and you shall not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you. Good measure pressed down, shaken together. And running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Fathers and the Holy Spirit, one God, I mean, <clears throat> forgive and you will be forgiven. It is a very clear commandment. The Lord Jesus Christ, in the Lord's Prayer, that we repeat over and over daily, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. God give us the grace this morning to talk about our forgiveness of our brothers, the forgiveness of the offenses and the physiological wounds. Each of us can be hurt by anyone, can be hurt by brothers, sisters, parents, children, colleagues, priests, but our reaction to the wounds differ. Perhaps we ignore the wound. We ignore it constantly, and so the wounds get worse. Ignorance, avoidance, and neglect are the unconscious physiological trick that keep us away from being in touch with our feelings. It is kind of delay, but the wound is there, and it may grow deeper and more infected. Perhaps I build a strong defenses inside myself so that I don't get hurt again. We make sometime immediate quick decision. I will not enter into strong friendship with anyone again. I will not enter into a business relationship with any relative again. I will not never trust a man or a woman again. I will not participate in any church service again. These decisions may seem logical and healing solution, but they look us inside a prison of bitterness which becomes more bitter with time. Maybe we, one of the reaction is harm who harm me. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. And whose start is worse? This is not a Christian manner. But this means that you have been overcome by evil. The commandment said, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will keep coals of fire on his head. It's not only I did break the commandments, I was overcome by evil, and also the cycle of evil will increase. Evil begets evil. Fire does not quench fire, and water does not stop stream of water. Unfortunately, we enter into a rotten cycle of evil. So, 
the only correct solution for these offenses or bitterness is forgiveness. This is the solution that God has ordained to get rid of the bitterness and the effects of the wound. Forgiveness is the cure for the wounds of the soul of people. Just as a lack of forgiveness is the major obstacle to achieving purity of the heart and a major reason for stopping the spiritual growth in our life with our Lord. Some people admonish God saying, how, O oh Lord, do you want me to forgive them? They have wronged me very unfairly. Where is your justice, O oh Lord? I have been suffered because of it for years. Every time I see them, which is the abusers, I feel like this. The blood boils in my veins. The pressure drains my brain. And I get aggressive feeling. I want to devour them. I am not able and I, am, I don't want to forgive them. Some talk about the details of the suffering they went through. So and so disturbing my confidence in myself, or so and so mocked me and wet the floor with my dignity. They made me miserable on the most beautiful day of my life. They made me feel that no one in the world loves me. How do I forgive? How do I forgive? Why does God ask me to forgive the offender? Why does our Lord make this forgiveness a condition for the forgiveness of my sins? We talk a lot with the Lord. The answer is, our Lord wants you what's best for you. Our Lord is on your side and not on the side of the wrongdoer. Our Lord, with this forgiveness, wants to save your self from many dangerous evils and diseases. There is some risks if we not forgive. There is some results or consequences for internal pitters. It could be a physiological status, an anxiety, tension, depression, disturbance of sleeping and eating. Look what's happened to the king Ab. Because he did not forgive Napoth for refusing to sell a vineyard in the Old Testament. In the first Kings chapter 21 say, So Ahab went into his house, Salim, and displaced, and he lay down on his bed and turned away his face and would eat no food. Bitterness leads to a physical disease sometime. Bitterness leads to headache, joint pain, high blood sugar, diabetes, high blood pressure, heart diseases, digestive diseases, the cause of stomach ulcer is not what you eat, but it's what eats you, what boils inside you, because you, has not, you have not forgiven. It could bring trouble, troubled relationships with people. Bitterness can affect the environment in which you live, making the whole environment bitter. It is possible that the bitterness inside me leads to building a wall between me and people to protect myself from any more wounds or so that people do not know my weaknesses and my wounds. The reason that I will not talk to everyone is wrong. Sometimes I will not accompany anyone I will not confess to anyone, and this is wrong as well. 
bitterness is called hatred. Bitterness and hatred blind the eyes, depriving the person of spiritual insight. St. John said in his first epistle, chapter 2, he who say he is in the, in the light and hates his brother is in darkness until now and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because darkness has blinded his eyes. A person, when he hears when his eyes is blurred and remains in darkness, he does not see the truth. He does not see the reality of others. He does not see the reality of the situations. Does not see the roles of in the problem, his role in the problem. Does not see his role in the solution and does not see the needs of the other. Perhaps the one who hurt you never had someone show him love or kindness. Don't think everyone have this feeling. Maybe some people, they haven't feel it at all. They haven't got parents. They haven't got friends. They haven't feel it at all. And so he does not have the ability to love others. Perhaps if you realize the depths of the wounds of others, your wound will be easier for you, and you will kind to them and forgive them. Bitterness makes you attached to the past. You always think about what's happened, why it has happened, and how it's happened, and why you kept it silent. I should have done this and that at that time. You live in the bitterness of the past, and this hurts your enjoyment of the present and your launch toward the future. The spiritual principles is forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Being engrossed in the bitterness of the past it's like crying over the spilled milk to no avail. Bitterness hardens the heart and causes coldness of feeling. Of course, there's some importance of the forgiveness. It is the only way to get rid of bitterness. It is inching the bitter cup at the feet of Christ. Forgiveness has many positive effects that are reflected in my relationships with everyone, with myself, with people, with the Lord. My relationship with myself is improving. Usually, a person who does not forgive himself has a feel of guilt. It will be difficult for him to forgive others. That's why when he succeeds, in forgiving and pardoning others. The guilt complex he has decreased and he reconciled with himself. As long as there's a problem and bitterness inside you, you may feel that our Lord has left you. Our Lord has wronged you. Our Lord is not just. Our Lord has not brought you justice. But when I forgive and pardon, all these negative thoughts about our Lord disappear. And my relationship with the Lord improves. With others, my relationship is fixed with this same person who previously put in a fixed frame. That person is a monster. They wrong. They don't love me. But when I forgave them and pardoned them and came closer to them, I discover 
many sweet traits in them. Also, my relationship with people is improving because I used to build a wall for myself between me and people. And I was very careful in my relationship so that I would not be embarrassed again. When I forgive, people's image improved in my eyes and my relationship with them improved. Forgiveness make me enjoy my spiritual fruits. I enjoy God's forgiveness. It is clear. If I forgive, I will enjoy God's forgiveness. In order for David to escape and find no place for himself, as long as there is enmity, strife, bitterness, Satan always work. Engaging the matter, making bigger, bringing sort of revenge. Take the blessing, carrying out the commandment, appearing, forgiving, repay no one evil for evil. Do not avenge yourself. What is the forgiveness itself? The forgiveness is granting a free pardon for abuse, abandonment, and wounding. It's a free pardon for abuse, abandonment, and wounding. It is not claiming the debts. The words forgive means to give in advance. Give in advance. Unconditional love is given free of a charge to those we forgive. That's without waiting for any return or wages. In the example of the prodigal son, the father forgave all the offenses of his son, free of a charge, unconditional love. But for us, we owe a debt to our Lord, and he forgave us. As Christ forgave you, so our forgiveness is an example of God's forgiveness of us. Forgiveness is a voluntary decision. Then, after that, feelings follow it. Get rid of feeling of hatred and anger. Forgiveness relieves feeling of pain and bitterness, like a wound full of buzz, and it's now clear and drained. Whom do we forgive? Everyone. Everyone. Parents, children, friends, colleagues, priests, everyone. Many of us have suffered physio physiologically from one or both parents, suffering due a bitterness that we experience since childhood. Perhaps one does not remember the cause of bitterness or the cause of enmity, but it is present within the soul. But think, maybe parents acted within the limits of what they learned or maybe within the limits of what they thought was for our good. Let us remember the first commandment with the promise, honor your father and your mother, and honor included, of course, forgiveness. Husband and wife, sometime a person dreams of wonderful relationships in marriage, and they get surprised with wounds that lead to bitterness, abuse, neglect, misplaced word, bad treatment from big family, abandonment in times of distress. Some suffered from bitterness because of abuse at work and cannot express anger with their boss. So the bitterness comes out on those in the house, in general. 
marriage needs the forgiveness I that cover it. I forgive him today, and he will forgive me tomorrow. The daily discharge through the family altar, kiss one another, and the nightly apology, do not let the sun go down on your words, which is your bitterness. Forgive those who are close to you, brothers, sisters, friends, co-workers, apostles, leaders, servants, our fathers, the priest. Let me just quickly give you some practical steps for the forgiveness process. First thing is decision. Forgiveness is a voluntary decision, decided to forgive because it is the only solution to get rid of the internal bitterness and to enjoy God's forgiveness. This is the most important one. Second is acknowledgement. Confess in front of yourself. I also wounded others. And I may have wounded the same person who wounded me before. Third, express your feelings. Express them in secret or in public. In secret, remembering St. Joseph the Righteous position, whom he asked for a place to cry in evacuating his feeling without impressing anyone. And this helped him to forgive his brothers without experiencing Expressing a feeling of pain, the heart remains uncomfortable. It seek forgiving love. Seek forgiving love. Ask our Lord to pour out His pure love with the Holy Spirit. Stand before the cross of the suffering Christ and ask Him for divine help. He is the one who forgives those who do not deserve, which is I'm one of them, and he helps you to do that. Prayers. Pray for yourself and the other's person as well. Lord, forgive us. Lord, bless them and bless me. Forgive them and forgive me. Finally, finally there is some things can hinder the forgiveness. The pride, the ego, the inflated self, by saying, how could they do this with me? They forgot who they are. They don't know who they are talking to. They don't know what I am and what they are. All these words and feeling that express pride. Be careful. God resists the arrogance and does not give them any blessings. Forgiveness is blessing. Self-righteousness. Feeling that I did not wrong anyone. Why did this happen to me and I have never wronged anyone? Or saying to someone, well, forgive you because I am better than you. That person will not be able to forgive because of his sense of virtues and self-righteousness. Another thing which is not feeling in debt to God. No feeling and not knowing the value of the forgiveness that was offered to us on the cross. In the example of the two debtor, maybe the position of the first slave to his second brother came from the fact that he did not believe that his debt really ceased or exists. The person who is uncertain that our Lord has forgiven him, it's easy for him to forgive others. Sometimes we have some delusions, fear. Sometimes we're thinking that people will think that I am weak. People, they think that I am afraid of them. They can take advantage of the situation and hurt me again. All these thoughts from the enemy. 
I must know that forgiveness always stand in a strong position. Jesus on the cross was in a wrong position when he forgave everyone. The last one is fake forgiveness. I deny my feelings. I say I'm not upset, but I'm boiling from inside. Without acknowledging my feeling and dealing with them as before. Repression accused and bitterness increased. Forgiveness is facing the wound, acknowledging it, expressing my feeling with love. Here, drainage accused and forgiveness accused. Just have a small prayer. Try to say it. To have the grace of the forgiveness. Say to the Lord, Lord, please wash me. And shall I shall be whiter than snow. Wash me from all the bitterness inside me. Wash me from all the negative feeling towards so and so. Give them grace in my eyes. And give me grace in their eyes. Speak peace in our heart. Both of us. Pardon them and pardon me. Forgive them and forgive me. Lord, I owe you so much. Give me the grace to forgive my brothers for the little that they owe me. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.